As you may know already, typography plays a huge part in any design project. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of uh, type anatomy, the basics of typography, as well as uh, common vocabulary used uh, and uh, that you need to know as a designer when dealing with typography. And just before we get started, I want to remind you that uh, I recently launched uh, a Getting Starting UI UX Design course, uh, so feel free to check it out if you're interested in uh, Getting Starting UI UX Design. And I myself have been doing this for over eight years, and in the course, uh, you're going to have a brief uh, overview of the basics uh, learning how to use Sketch as well as other essentials to become a successful designer. But now without further ado, let's get started. Now let's discuss some other typography terminology which you're going to encounter quite a bit. Now, the first one is going to be a refresher on what a font family is. And a font family is a set of fonts that have a common design. So fonts within a family, uh, however, differ from each other in styles such as the weight. So for example, a font can be light, can be normal, can be bold or semi-bold, and uh, also the slant. So is it Roman? Is it upright? Is it italic or oblique? And an example of a font family would be Times New Roman, which is a very famous font family which is installed in pretty much every Mac and Windows and consists of a Roman, Italic, Bold, and Bold Italic version of the same typeface. Now let's talk about the stroke, which is simply one of the lines that comprise any given letter. So it can be straight or curved, and if the former will be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, and if in the latter case, it will be closed or open. Now, for example, in this lowercase k, there are three strokes, both vertical and diagonal, and we highlight, highlighted the vertical one. Now, let's talk about the stem. And the stem is essentially a type of stroke, and it's the basic unit of the part of a character. Now, the stem is usually the main and vertical stroke in a letter. So in the capital letter L, the stem here is the long vertical stroke that forms most of this letter. And uh, it's important to know that since the stroke and the stem are so closely related, it's easy to get them confused if you're not paying close attention. Now I also want to introduce you to the concept of a slab serif, since in the previous videos we discussed serif and sans serif, but there's also a third Ita element, which is going to be the slab serif. And these are essentially fonts uh, that have very thick series at the end of each letter strokes. Now, these typefaces were very popular back in the 19th century, and uh, uh, that's also when they were invented. So historically, these were utilized mainly in uh, typewriters, and the slab serif legacy is alive today with lots of monospace text uh, fonts uh, meant for a computer, still using slab series. But not only limited to that, it's also very common in uh, uh, magazines or other type of uh, designs. Now, another type of typeface is the script typeface, which um, script font families are essentially unique in the way that they resemble handwriting. So you know you're looking at script uh, when you, you see fonts uh, with uh, the fluid strokes uh, or cursive. More common in trade or display printing, scripts today are scalable, which means that letters in scripts are automatically stung together when they're used for digital printing. Not only does this effectively copy handwriting, but it's more convenient for users than having to manually select which characters follow each other in words. Now let's talk about black letter typeface. Black Letter is a script that was very popular in Western Europe from the 12th to the 17th century, and also known by the name of Gothic script, uh, Textura, and Gothic Minuscule. Black Letter is characterized by very thin and thick strokes, as well as the ornate uh, swirls evident on its serifs. Now, because of the script uh, focus on being elaborate, readability and legibility can take a hit. And uh, some of the most famous black letter fonts uh, are Germanica and Cloyster Black. Now let's talk about uh, the X height. So the X height is your basic height of a lowercase letter. 
and most specifically when referring to the actual letter X. Now the X height excludes the ascenders and descenders, which are respectively the parts of, let of lowercase letters that extend over the X height and those parts uh, that descend beneath their baselines. Now let's also introduce uh, the concept of a cap height. Now this one is pretty straightforward. The cap height of a character is the height of a capital letter from the baseline all the way to the top of the cap. And uh, this is most uh, reliably measured when a character possesses a flat baseline and examples of these are the E, the L, and the I, uh, just to name a few. Now, on the other hand, uh, characters uh, with curved bottoms like O, C, and uh, other ones makes it a bit more difficult to accurately measure their cap heights. Let's discuss now the points. So this one is utilized to measure the size of a font. So as a rule, one point equals just one seventy-tooth of uh, an inch, and if a letter is referred to as, you know, for example, twenty-four points, this means that the whole height of the text block is being indicated, and not solely the character on its own. Now, another concept which is important to consider is the kerning. And the kerning is the procedure of altering the spaces in between the letters in a font, but only among specific and individual letters. So, in other words, kerning allows for varying degrees of spaces between different letters in the same word. And as long as the end result is visually attractive, of course. Now, the very last concept which I want to communicate is uh, the concept of a leading. And, uh, this one is another essential term in typography and a leading basically relates to the spacing between any successive lines of type. It's also known as line spacing and leading is most prevalent when you have to either single or double space your work. Now leading refers to the distance between the baselines of type and the baselines being the actual lines of which the characters rest. All right, so in this video, we're going to explore the anatomy of a letter. Now, we talked about fonts and typography in general, but we must focus on letters since each and every letter is a universe in and of itself. So let's have a look at some of the major characteristics which you're going to find through pretty much every font available. So let's start with the very first element, which is going to be the baseline. And as you can see, it's this line right here and it's an invisible line where letters rest on. Now let's talk about ascenders and descenders. As you can see, we have the X height and above this, you're going to find the ascenders in letters such as the H and also the descenders, which are in letters such as the Y. Now letters with downward strokes that extend past the baseline have descender strokes. And alternatively, if the stroke moves upward and away from the main body of the letter, we call that the ascender stroke. Now let's talk about the counters, which are fully or partial closed spaces found in letters like O, A, and B. And if the letter isn't fully enclosed, then it's an open counter. Now let's also mention the stem, which is this one right here. Now, a single vertical stroke upwards uh, to create uh, letters uh, like L or F. And uh, it connects one stem to another using a crossbar detail like the letter H. Now, we should also make a note uh, on the fact that uh, we have uppercase letters and lowercase letters. And the uppercase, or essentially as the name refers to um, capitalized versions of that letter, of the lowercase or the non-capitalized versions. Now, we also mentioned the fact that there is this X height and for lowercase letters, the X height is the main body of the letter. Now, another cool fact is that we have the ear in some letters, such as uh, uh, the letter G. So an ear is a decorative detail that pokes out from the letters like a G. We also have a similar element, which is called a shoulder, and uh, it 
It's basically a bumped curve seen in letters like M and N or R.